Hi, my name is Tom Mavro and welcome to the Cut It TV training channel. The channel has been set up to provide easy to follow training tutorials in today's key media production software. Cut It itself is a UK based training company with over 15 years experience providing hands on training in media production. If you would like any further information about our training services, please visit our website at www.cut-it.tv or check us out on social media. I hope you enjoy the following tutorial. Next, we're going to have a look at outputting a sequence. So I'm going to select the sequence down here go to the file menu, go to export and go to media. This will open up the export settings window. I might want to limit the output to just a part of my timeline. I can do this in a couple of ways. One I could have added in and out points already on the timeline and the default option here is it only outputs between a sequence in and out point. Alternatively I can grab these little in and out point markers here in the preview area of the export settings window and I can drag those in and that would limit my output to a custom range. If I want to make sure it outputs everything, the easiest way of doing this is just click on this little menu at the bottom here and choose entire sequence. That is definitely then going to output the entire sequence regardless of any in and out points. In terms of picking the format I want to output as, this is done on the right hand side of the window. So we have a, a number of different format options. By clicking on the little format menu here we can see them. So there's some audio options, video options. There's options for broadcast quality, export, so MXF OP1A or in the UK, AS11 are both acceptable as broadcast quality. Or we could do a Apple ProRes output. You do this by, by choosing QuickTime as your format. And then in the video codec area here of the video tab, click on there. And then there's the Apple ProRes options. If I was going to broadcast, I'd usually pick Apple ProRes 422 HQ or 422. For this tutorial though, we're going to look at how to export in a suitable format for anything online. So YouTube, Vimeo, playback on a computer or device in general, output to a website and so on. I'm going to go back up to the format option here and I'm going to choose H.264. H.264 is pretty much now the default output format for anything that goes online. Pretty much every device can play H.264 as can Macs and PCs at different frame rates here. So 720p, 1080i, 1080p, standard definition outputs, outputs for TiVo, Vimeo, YouTube. Most of these have some different options for different frame rates. So anything that has a number this side of it that indicates the output frame rate. So 25 frames a second, 29.97 and so on. Or if you go for say the Vimeo or YouTube presets, that just picks up by default the frame rate of your sequence in Adobe Premiere. As a general default setting, I tend to go for the YouTube presets. To be honest, the YouTube and the Vimeo presets are effectively the same anyway. These work as quite a good default option for anything online. I would pick the relevant frame size. So we've got everything from 4K, 1080 HD, 720 HD, down to SD widescreen and 4x3 aspect ratios. For YouTube, I would usually pick either 1080p or 720p. Let's go for 1080p this time because my footage is actually 1080. We need to tell it where to send the output movie. And you do this by clicking on the output name option here. So you actually click on the blue text here. This allows you to give your file a name. Let's just call it interview. And tell it where you want to output to so I can send that anywhere on my system let's maybe just send it to the desktop click save one of the things about output outputting for online is balancing the file size with the quality of the video by using h264 you're compressing the video but you can dictate how much compression you actually add the more compression you add the smaller the file also though the more compression you add the more information you're throwing away and the, potentially the worse the quality of the output file. So there's a balancing act between file size and quality. The thing that dictates this more than anything is what's called the bit rate of the video itself. So this is how many megabits per second the file contains. The more megabits per second, the better the quality, the bigger the file, the less megabits per second, the smaller the file, the lower the quality. You can dictate 
the bitrate of the video in this video tab here. You scroll down on the right hand side and here in the, under bitrate settings is where you can access and amend the bitrate of the output movie. There's essentially two main ways of encoding the footage itself. This is under this bitrate encoding menu here. We have CBR and VBR. I'll explain the difference between one pass and two pass shortly. CBR which stands for constant bitrate gives you one bitrate setting. So that means that I can adjust the overall bitrate, but everything is going to be encoded at the same bitrate. It's not going to take into account the footage itself. The things that make a video clip harder or easier to encode are the amount of detail within each frame and the amount of movement or changes between frames. So that relates to movement in the shot itself, movement of the camera, things like animated graphics, things like transitions. All of these things where there's more movement and more changes between frames make the video harder to compress. The problem with CBR is, because it only gives you one bit rate, there may be areas of the video sequence that you could compress more and reduce the bitrate on and then there's other areas where maybe the bitrate you set is too low and needed less compression on and because it just does everything the same you could potentially end up with a larger file than you needed to and also potentially in places worse quality than you would like. The only real reason for using CBR encoding is where you're setting up video to stream over the internet where you need a constant stream of data that does not vary. If you're doing anything for download or anything just for playback on a device I would suggest not using CBR encoding. Instead, I would go for VBR. Now this stands for variable bitrate. So you get two bitrate settings with this. You get a target bitrate and a maximum bitrate. Now the idea is this, you set your target bitrate, it will try and stay as close to that as possible. But by setting a maximum bitrate, if it hits any difficult bits in the sequence to encode, it can go right up to the maximum bitrate that you set. So you quite often get a more optimized file in terms of file size, but also if you set these settings intelligently, you should get a file that looks good as well. Now at the moment, the default here is both the target bitrate and the maximum bitrate is set to 16 megabits per second, which is relatively high. If I look at the file size here, it's just 24 megs, so this is only a tiny little file. It's only uh, 12 seconds of footage, so it's going to be small. However, by adjusting the target bitrate, you can get the file size down considerably. What I usually do with H.264 at either 1080 or 720 frame size is take the target bitrate and bring it down to somewhere between 3 and 4. If it's easy footage to encode, I go nearer 3. If it's harder footage, I keep it around 4. I can do that by dragging the little slider up or down here, or I can click in the number there and type in. Let's, let's go for 4 on this one. Now, if we have a look at the estimated file size now, that's gone down to 6 megabytes from 24. So I've effectively quartered the file size by reducing that target bitrate down. And that is usually the changing file size that you get by doing this. The quality, though, should maintain itself and it should look absolutely fine at this target bitrate. The difference between 1-pass VBR and 2-pass VBR is with 1-pass VBR, the movie is both analysed and encoded at the same time. So it will chug through looking and analysing the footage and at the same time it's creating the H.264 file. 2-pass VBR will go through the file once just analysing the file itself and then go back to the start and go through a second time and do the actual encoding. This means it takes twice as long to create the file itself. However, because it's spent longer analysing the footage you'll get a little bit better quality out of it. You don't, however, get double the quality. So I would suggest that if you have a very long output to do and you're pushed for time, you stick with one pass VBR. However, if you've got the time or it's a short output that you're doing, you might as well select VBR two pass. Another thing that increases the render time a bit, but also gives you slightly better quality is to tick this tick box here, render at maximum bit depth. There's a couple of settings at the bottom here that I just want to quickly mention. Use maximum render quality. This is only relevant if you have a change in frame size for the output movie. So maybe you're going from 1080 to 720. It spends longer analysing that change in frame size and therefore will give you a slightly better result when you are changing the frame size of the footage. If you're not changing the frame size of the footage, it's completely irrelevant and there is no point in ticking it. Use previews 
tells it rather than going back to the original footage, reapplying any effects, etc., that you've added in Premiere, and then using that as the basis for your output movie, it tells it to use any render files that you've generated by rendering your sequence. I would usually keep this off. Depending on your sequence settings and whether your sequence settings and your footage match each other exactly, you could end up with render files that are a lower quality than your original footage. So to avoid any drop in quality where it then uses those preview files, I would just keep this unticked. It does though speed up your render time if you tick this. Import into project just tells it to import the resultant file back into your project. In fact, I'm going to tick that so we can have a look at it. And finally, you can set a start time code for your output. Finally, when you're ready to do the actual output movie, you have two options as to how to export this. If I click export, that will start rendering the movie out straight away. And once it's done, I've got my output movie. The disadvantage of this is it locks you out of Adobe Premiere while you're doing this. So if you wanted to send out and create more versions of this movie or open up another sequence and do an output or go back in and do any re-editing, you're not going to be able to do that until it's finished exporting the movie. So if it's a short sequence and it's a one-off output, fine, click export. But if you've got multiple outputs to do or it's a very long sequence and you think you might need to get back into Premiere in the meantime, I would choose this option, Q. What Q does is it launches another bit of software called Adobe Media Encoder, which installs when you install Adobe Premiere. Adobe Media Encoder itself is a standalone package and you can use it for transcoding both video and audio clips. It has the same set of presets in that we saw in the export settings window. You can drag a clip into this area here and just drag the preset on. You can click here to amend the preset. You can click here to change its output destination on your system. Or if you export from Adobe Premiere, it automatically adds your sequence and your output settings to the batch list here. Just so I can show you this, I'm going to do a second output. So let's go back into Premiere very quickly. And let's look at doing an Apple ProRes output. So I'm going to go to Export Media. This time I'm going to go to Format and I'm going to choose QuickTime. The presets here are irrelevant for the ProRes option. So I'm going to go straight down into the video option here, pick my codec, which is going to be Apple ProRes 42HQ. I've got a quality slider here. That then picks up the correct frame size, frame rate, etc. of my footage. I'm going to tell this to be progressive because actually this footage was shot progressive in the first place. So I'm going to take off this field order and switch that to progressive rather than interlaced. And I'm going to tick render at maximum bit depth. I need to tell it where to go. So let's click on the output name up here. We'll call it interview broadcast. Again, I'll send it to my desktop, click save and let's hit Q again and that will then add this next output to the batch list in Media Encoder. So I can just keep doing that until I've set up all my output options. When I'm ready to go, simply click this little Start Q button here. That starts rendering the files out. While it's doing this though, I can go back into Premiere and I can edit and so on within Adobe Premiere itself. Once the output files have finished, we should see the H.264 one open back up in Premiere. There it is, because I asked it to do that. Let's have a little look at it there. And that looks fine. Right, the ProRes one is now done as well. So here's the ProRes one. Again, it looks absolutely fine. If I want to open those up in QuickTime, what I would do is just go to my Finder, navigate to my desktop. There they both are. So let's have a little look. So this is the ProRes one. This is the H.264, as you can say, it also looks pretty good. Let's just have a little look at the file size. So the ProRes one was nearly 300 megabytes, whereas the H.264 one was just under 7 megabytes. So you can see the difference there in the file size uh, and uh, how well H.264 compresses the movie. There's just one extra thing to add. I can do a batch output from Premiere without having to open up each sequence individually. If I have a number of sequences, I can select them in the project window here by just highlighting them. Go up to the File menu, go to Export, and go to Media. This then opens up this Export Settings window as a batch. I pick my relevant setting again. So I do H.264, come down here, adjust the maximum 
and the minimum bit rate, so we'll go for around 16 and 4, and so on, set up maximum bit depth, etc. And then finally hit Q, and that will then export all of those sequences out to media encoder into the batch window, and then I can just hit the start Q button again, and that will start exporting those.